All right, well, he's meeting, and we're counting another CEO powwow for the president today, talking jobs and the economy with a group of tech company execs. That brings our tally to over 60 meetings with business leaders since the president took office. My next guest asking what's been accomplished. Lady Lynn, uh, Lady Lynn Farster de Rothschilds. I should get that down because it's so impressive. She joins me right now. My lady, what do you think of what he's doing? Meetings and photo ops, what do they really accomplish? He's got to realize that what he does speaks so loudly that we can't hear what he says. And The Economist reported that in his first two years, he issued, his government issued 132 economically significant regulations. That means that cost is over 100 million a year. And that's really hurting business. But most importantly, with an unemployment rate at 9.4%, up from 7.8% when he took office, he's not walking the walk well, of creating maybe, growth. Well, maybe he is, though. His argument... Um, is that, look, I'm meeting with these guys, I'm hearing them, I'm talking about cutting their corporate taxes, I extended the Bush rates, talk about cutting regulations, I've appointed a lot of, you know, money seasoned guys to my administration, a lot of Clinton guys who they loved, so I'm doing the, the walk too. What do you say? Well, I say that that was all December 2010 versus what he did January 2009 when he took office. And the question... So you believe more that January 2009 than the December 2010? Well, I care about who will show up January 2013 if he's re-elected in 2012. Well, oh, you will think he'll be... revert to his old ways? Well, that's what I'm afraid of. If, is he going to be the president of December 2010 right. or January 2009? That's the big question about him. And he's going to have to run on his record, not his words. Some of his words are very good. And uh, his record, actually, in December 2010 was also very consoling. One thing we know is he does do better for the country when he has a, a threat in Congress from the Republican Party. Right about that. There's just right. no question he's better. So a divided government in this case is a much safer bet if he is going to be president. And I hope he continues to do the right thing. But these meetings are not what's impressive. What will be impressive is if he is pro-growth in what he does with regulation, what he does with appointments, what he does with policies. And it's not just to scream from the right wing to say that health care is killing jobs. He's got to go back and look at it and say, how can we fix this thing so that we get a health care policy? Everybody said we need it, but, but don't do you, kill jobs do while you're doing liberal it. liberal friends, and you have a lot of liberal friends, you, you don't have any <laughs> conservative friends as far as I know. So <laughs> how do your liberal friends, and you were a big backer of Hillary Clinton, uh, you would not you know, coalesce around Barack Obama when he was the nominee. I think you went for John McCain. Um, and it's still bad blood, right? But w w what do they say to you? Like, do they ever say, look, why don't you get over it? He's the guy. He's, he's the nominee. He's the victor. He's the president. He'll be reelected. They all say that when they come here. Why don't you? Do they do all say that? No, they don't all say that to me. And my friends are the moderate. Just because someone's a Democrat, it doesn't mean they're liberal. We have a lot of moderate, and the conservative moderates share your Democrats. View. And they do, even the ones who supported Barack Obama. I think that they would be so happier. So they support any Republican over Barack Obama? No. No, they won't, they won't do that. Any Republican over Barack Obama? It depends on what kind of Barack Obama I think would show up in 2013. Oh, wow. Powerful. Just like the lady. <laughs> right, here we go. Um, lady Lynn Forrest, uh, the Rothschild.